Shri Vidu, Shri Ram Pranav and Shri Ram. Hi everyone, we're the Galactic Hikers and today we'll be taking you through the barren world of A Walk in the Sun by Jeffrey A. Landis and our mathematical analyses of certain claims in the stories and whether or not they would actually work. My name is Vidushi. I'm Bari. Uh, I'm Ram Pranav. I'm Sriram. I'm Tanmay. And we hope you enjoy our journey onto the moon. Now on to Bari with the summary. Uh, I'll be telling you all the summary of our story. Uh, in this science fiction story, the protagonist Trish is the sole survivor of the crash landing on Moon in her ship Moon Shadow. She faces the challenges of surviving in a harsh lunar environment with limited resources. Uh, Trish mourns the loss of her crewmates and contemplates her own fate. Determined to survive, she takes stock of her uh, assets, including her intact spacesuit and remaining supplies. She starts depending on a wing-like solar panel to provide power to her suit's recycling facilities, for which she needs to remain on the bright side of the moon. Trish realizes that she must call for help, but then discovers that the nearest assistance is on Earth, which is a quarter of a million miles away. To stay alive, Trish has to keep walking continually to stay in the sunlight. Whilst on her journey, she passes wonders of the moon unseen to any other before her. While she walks, she has to maintain her suit, sleep, rations, and ensure that she is moving at a fast pace. Due to exhaustion and loneliness, she starts hallucinating that her elder sister Karen is there with her, who died a few years earlier. Uh, once she cannot cope anymore, she goes up a mountain and signals for radio help. After a strenuous climb, she successfully contacts Geneva Control and learns that a rescue mission cannot be sent until 30 days later due to the lunar night approaching. Despite the challenges and uncertainty, Trish resolves to wait for the rescue mission, displaying her determination to survive. Now on to Ram Pranav. Okay, next question. Okay, so, wait. Okay. All right, so question one is a very simple question. So basically, Trish, or the main character, she kind of holds out her hand like this, and when she holds out her hand like this, the earth is covering, uh, the earth is being covered from her perspective and it's being, uh, her hand is covering the earth. And uh, from the story, we know that the hand span measures 20 centimeters, which is just the distance from the bottom of your hand to the top of your hand. And the uh, arm span, which is uh, 60, centim uh, 60 centimeters. And the moon distance from the earth is approximately 384,000 400 kilometers and based on this information what is the angular distance of the earth as seen from the moon okay so based on the information given in the story we're able to draw this diagram where where this is her arm and this is her hand and using that information and we know that the earth is being covered from her perspective. So using that information, we're able to draw a 90-degree uh, triangle and use tan inverse, like shown over here, to calculate the angular diameter of the earth from the moon, 
which is 18.4 degrees. Just for comparison, the angular size of the moon from the Earth is approximately 5 degrees. Same thing with the sun. The Earth, however, from the moon is 18.4, which shows you how big the Earth is from the moon. So the next question is, so if a, a Trish takes six days uh, to travel quarter across the moon, um, um, so what is, we have to calculate her average speed and how fast she would need to move uh, to achieve a distance which is equal to uh, the uh, circumference of the moon in uh, 24 more days. Um, and uh, we have to compare um, how, um, we have to compare how, um, how fast she has to move to uh, the required speed. And um, so also we need to calculate at wa um, what is the distance if she moves uh, at the speed she is going right now. And uh, with the circumference gi given in the story as 11,000 uh, kilometers. Next slide. Next slide. So with our given uh, circumference, give, uh, 11,000 kilometers, we ca compute the uh, quarter circumference, that is um, 2,750 kilometers. And uh, we can find Trish's, uh, Trish's uh, average speed in uh, six days. That is 5.31 meter per second. So um, after that, we have to f uh, compute the required speed of Trish. So we get uh, 3.98 meter per second. So now we can say that Trish's uh, average speed is greater than the required speed. So now um, we have to calculate the difference that is 1.33 meter per second and uh, we have to find the exceeded distance. So um, uh, 1.33 meter per second times 30 days, she travels um, 344.736 kilometers if she walks at the same speed and uh, that means she will exceed uh, the circumference. So um, I would like to also add that um, at, the sp uh, at the speed she is moving, that is 5.31 meters per second. This is uh, almost equal to uh, a marathon runner's uh, speed on Earth's gravity. Now I would like to hand over to Tanmay. So as we know, the spacecraft, uh, from the summary, this spacecraft crashed. So how much test is required for soft landing of the, uh, of the rocket? So these are the parameters given below. The height of the rocket is around 110 meters. The moon's gravity acceleration is 1.667. The mass of the rocket is 28 tons, which is around 25,400 25, kgs. The initial velocity is 20 meter per second. The final velocity is 0 0.2 meter per second. And the distance from the moon when thrusters were activated are 500 meters. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, from the diagram, we can see that uh, this is the rocket. This is the height, the final velocity. And so to calculate the acceleration, the net acceleration, we are going to use Newton's uh, law of motion. From that, we get acceleration as 0 0.996 meters per second square. So by using acceleration, we can calculate the thrust, of the upward thrust, which is around 32,250 newtons. So for comparison, 32,250 newtons is aroundly required by the uh, cables to lift off a whole crane. Now, in conclusion, we believe that the author did a relatively good job in maintaining accuracy, even when adding new technologies to the story. The scientific base, along with the fiction of the story, truly did lead to it being an enthralling and entertaining science fiction read. Now, lastly, we'd like to thank our professors, TAs, and TFs for guiding us and letting us venture into another world. We'd also like to thank the audience for listening to our presentation and uh, following us on our journey into debunking and proving elements of the story. Now we open the floor to any questions.
any questions? Okay, if we don't have any questions, we can move to our next group, which is called NASA, where we have um, Ninad, Ansh Tevatne, Ansh Jain, and Sukriti. Yeah.